Now, what do you pe- what have you people heard of ozone in your schools and colleges? What have you heard of ozone so far in your life? So you thought of ozone as your friend. Yes, it protects us from harmful ultraviolet radiations from sun, and it is true also. I am not uh, saying it is wrong, but the ozone where is it present naturally? It is present in stratosphere, above troposphere. approximately how many kilometers from earth stratosphere around 13 kilometers on an average it varies polar regions 8 kilometers from uh, the surface and in uh, equatorial regions around 18 kilometers from the surface so average 13 kilometers from surface you have stratosphere starting that is where tropo- ozone is present naturally and if the ozone is present over there it is our friend the same friend in stratosphere if it is present at ground level it will become a pollutant so which are the i mean ways in which it is produced remember photochemical smog that i discussed about avagle reaction varudhu alva now we will write down how ground level ozone is formed oxides of nitrogen they react with organic compounds in the presence of sunlight to produce photochemical smog photochemical smog also contains ozone among other things which we are not concerned about is that clear in the presence of sunlight it happens now my question oxides of nitrogen how are they produced you have to recall you have to recall things yes ready nitrification okay that's good other uh, basically speaking all those chemical reactions in which uh, bacteria fixes nitrogen that is when oxides of nitrogen could be formed then apart from that there is one more way in which it is nitrogen uh, oxides of nitrogen are naturally formed that is lightning lightning putala lightning and thunder so lightning produces nitrogen naturally two ways one is by bacteria other one is by yeah the lightning that is about nitrogen compound naturally but uh, artificial and man made causes how nitrogen oxide is produced ha huh? recall nitrogen cycle Uh, fertilizers or whatever whether you use fertilizers or whatever does it form a part of life nitrogen other than that's what we saw in cycle it forms a part of life and when that life buries deep underneath don't you think nitrogen will be along with that and when that becomes a fossil fuel after millions of years still nitrogen will be there and when you take that out and when you burn that in the presence of oxygen don't you think oxides of nitrogen will be produced yes so burning of fossil fuels simply speaking vehicular emissions your vehicle emits uh, it burns petrol and it produces uh, smoke no that actually has oxides of nitrogen do you agree with this or not yes get that link it's a part of life and when the life was buried deep underneath it was taken out and burnt it has the presence of oxides of nitrogen and apart from that what do you mean by organic compounds or basically they are also called as volatile organic compounds now what are volatile organic compounds now the organic compounds which uh, you know like if you keep it just out in open it will evaporate example petrol spirit so if you just keep it out in open it will evaporate they are called as volatile volatile organic compound volatile in sense they are very easily evaporable anta is that clear now sometimes while burning of this petrol and diesel the fuel does not get burnt properly and when it does not get burnt properly some tiny droplets of these fuels which are probably in the form of vapor they'll be floating around yes or no this nitrogen compound which was released by burning of fossil for fossils will react with these volatile organic compounds 
which are uh, you know the parts of these fuels which are kind of floating in the air in the presence of sunlight to produce photochemical smog a component of which is ozone apart from this the chemical reaction would be complicated and it is not necessary for the point of view of your exam but uh, apart from oxides of nitrogen carbon monoxide also plays a crucial role here carbon monoxide plus oxides of nitrogen plus organic compounds they kind of interact with each other in the presence of sunlight to produce photochemical smog yes i have kind of explained it to you how it is produced chemical reaction as well as the sources is that clear okay if that is clear next we will see what is the effect on health what effect does it have on health actually it uh, causes your itchy eyes kannuri and it uh, what do you say lowers your resistance to cold and pneumonia those are some problems of this ozone and it does not have much impact on environment the effect of ozone is more on human health today next we'll see nitrogen dioxide see after this class you don't have to refer to any other material or anything for uh, air pollution i would say whatever you are noting down in these three aspects you have to see you know how it is first of all produced and next what is the effect on health what is the effect on environment these are three dimensions which you should look at every pollutant is that clear okay next we'll see oxides of nitrogen or uh, nitrogen dioxide particularly and when it comes to oxides of nitrogen there could be either nitrogen monoxide or nitrogen dioxide now you only will tell me how when when uh, don't think it to think of it as no it is nitrogen monoxide mat no anta barko bitidalli hmm when is it produced ha huh? burning of fuels in the limited supply of oxygen it will produce nitrogen monoxide and uh that is how it is produced then how about effect effect in and also one more important cause that i have already um, i mean that i have not mentioned is about the usage of nitrogenous fertilizers in agriculture excessive use of nitrogenous fertilizer agriculture again input aktira what are the two uh, the three main input that you give to agriculture npk athwa urea in these cases what is the main major component of the veteral nitrogen nitrogen is the major uh, constituent of these fertilizers and these fertilizers what will happen to them they will be used excessively beyond what is actually required by the uh, land and if you use excessively what will happen they will interact with oxygen and they will ultimately escape into atmosphere is that clear hmm. next uh, what are the effects on human health it is believed that nitrogen dioxide is going to cause asthma asthma gotalva in idu breathing problem it is believed that nitrogen dioxide is going to cause asthma and other respiratory diseases effect on and do they cause problem with respect to environment barkoli next with respect to environment do they cause any problem with respect to environment that's a very good answer what he told because he have already learned that talpadak munche we we learned that no now okay that is fine with respect to formation of ozone it is going to cause problem which probably you, you people will note down but answer my question does it cause global warming if this question is asked to you in the examination first of all global warming andre gotalva heating of earth so is it a greenhouse gas does it cause global warming this possible question is there in the examination in fact this causes global cooling <laughs> it does not cause global warming but uh, you these two are brothers 
and they have one more sister called as nitrous oxide that causes global warming be careful here this is where upsc will try to trick you nitrogen monoxide nitrogen dioxide they are global coolants and this one nitrous oxide is a culprit it causes global warming and by the way don't uh, note this down in this place or if you are going to note down put it in bracket and you can mark it as a, what do you say exception anta helbodu first of all why are they global coolants why do they cause global cooling nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide because they will react with methane and kind of destroy it what is methane correct methane is a greenhouse gas methane causes global warming so they destroy methane so they basically cause global cooling yes or no this class is more of a chemistry class rather than environment class alwa but we are looking at the effects of chemistry on environment and health sulfur dioxide again how is sulfur dioxide produced who is going to tell me similar to who told that that's good it is produced in a similar way to nitrogen dioxide how sulfur was also a part of life yes and when that fossils got buried sulfur also got buried and when you burn the fossil sulfur is released sulfur dioxide is released yes or no okay that is how it is produced then what are the effects of sulfur dioxide on human health same yes that's correct it causes respiratory problems premature death avalagata then first of all it's a foul smelling gas alwa remember i said hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide are the two forms of gases that are present in sulfur cycle remember we also answered a question previous year upsc question in which were, which of the following is a perfect uh, uh, sedimentary cycle anta no kelidra alwa and the answer was that was phosphorus not sulfur why sulfur is present as a gas is that clear and uh, sulfur if it is um, inhaled it for, for smells bad that is one thing and how about the effect on health oh, sorry effect on environment both this sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide this is nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide they interact with water water vapor that is present in atmosphere to produce acid rain that is the effect on environment is that clear sulfur dioxide next we will see another important pollutant benzene have you heard of a have heard of benzene where have you heard of chemistry class physics class al kelidra what is benzene it is an aromatic compound and where is it present how is it produced it is a part of crude oil what is crude oil crude oil is uh, basically the extraction of uh, this petrol petroleum from ground it is extracted <laughs> in the form of crude oil and that after undergoing fractional distillation will produce this different uh, what do you say fuels petrol diesel kerosene avella baruthe is that clear crude oil antandre the oil which is extracted from the oil wells okay so these are different pollutants that are present and you can also think of particulate matter have you heard of particulate matter what is particulate matter okay by the way i forgot to mention about the effects of benzene the effects of benzene basically it does not affect much of uh, human health it affects the environment it actually causes uh, cancer higher risk of cancer it is a carcinogenic substance and there is proof that it has caused 
bone marrow failure see after these classes if you try to read newspapers you will understand it better i hope you understand it better especially the things related to climate change which we will be discussing later climate change related concept or environment pollution related concept some pollutant which is there in news i think you will be able to understand that better after these classes uh now let us understand this term what is what is this particulate so something related to particles yes particles which are pollutant have you ever observed i mean you were sitting across this room and there was this sunlight which passed uh what do you say at right angles to you sunlight was passing at right angles to you and that ignited the constituents of air ignited alla enantar adukke it uh, illuminated the constituents of air what was that have you observed these tiny dust like particles which are actually floating in air they are particulate pollutants is that clear and when it comes to particulate pollutants we call it as particulate matter pm anta karithive there are two types one is pm 2.5 and the other one is pm 10 2.5 and 10 actually refers to the size of these pollutants and it is measured in microns if the size is less than 2.5 microns it is it becomes pm 2.5 if it is between 2.5 to 10 then we call it as we classify it as pm 10 now i said between 0 to 2.5 microns pm 2.5 and between 2.5 microns to 10 microns pm 10 what if it is beyond 10 pm 10 is just there what will happen more if it is more than that's correct they settle on the ground gravity will pull them and they will settle on the ground you see dust particles which actually like if you kind of uh, uh, keep a vehicle and after some time if you just try to i mean if you just keep it for some one week you see this dust which is settled on the vehicle that was particulate matter which was beyond 10 microns that actually settled down when when you observed that light the particles which were floating they were possibly below 10 micron because they are floating and which one is the most dangerous among these two point two yes it can easily enter your lungs that is why they are most dangerous yavdo pm 2.5 and it has the possibility to cause breathing and respiratory problems have you heard of this problem called as pneumoconiosis you have never heard of it probably you all have suffered from this at some point of time ellru band hogide idu kaile but you don't know that you have had this pneumoconiosis is simply speaking dust allergy <laughs> you have inhaled dust you caught cold isn't it that actually create uh, had some infection in your throat that is pneumoconiosis simply speaking dust allergy and there is this fibrosis have you heard of fibrosis basically speaking these fibrous tissues that are there see your clothes have this fibrous tissues and sometimes those fibrous tissues kind of uh, um, what do you say they escape from your clothes and they start floating in air alwa those causes fibrosis yes ah uh, these dolls uh athwa ee cushion sirutalva so they also kind of uh, produce this fiber sometimes the, the wear and tear of these fibers will actually lead to floating of these fibers in at, in air and when you breathe you inhale those those fibers actually we do that every day we think we are breathing clean air actually but in fact you are inhaling all those things and that causes problem of lungs that is called as fibrosis 